Chalcopyrite Chalcopyrite is the most common copper ore, but the one with the least amount of copper by weight, 35% compared to chalcosite, 80%. Chalcopyrite, just like margarine, is one molecule away from being plastic. Hmm. Um, wrong script. Uh, yeah, let's rewind. Chalcopyrite, being C-U-F-E-S-2, is one atom away from being pyrite. Its name comes from chalcos, a Greek word meaning copper, and pyrite, its closest lookalike. It is closely associated with barnite in a rock called peacock hoar, for their tarnish that gives color resembling the bird. Along with its bright golden color and its greenish-black streak, the tarnish is the best characteristic to identify chalcopyrite in the field, as it can be hard to test the mineral for its hardness without a consistent cleavage or well-shaped crystal, most of the time. The presence of iron in the mineral structure gives rise to sparks when struck with a pickaxe. Chalcopyrite is soluble in nitric acid, although everyone at this channel does not recommend anyone at home to test this mineral this way. Its bright golden color makes it one of the most common minerals mistaken for gold. But do not despair, the presence of chalcopyrite is sometimes closely associated with gold deposits. Yeah, another deposit type often associated with chalcopyrite is the platinum group metals formed by mafic, ultramafic, ignis, intrusive, and found in greenstone belts. Banded iron formations are present within the greenstone belts, and they present clues about early Earth's climate. This field of research is called paleoclimatology. To learn more about BIF, click here on top and watch my segment about this subject. Greenstone belts are composed of metamorphosed mafic volcanic rocks interweaved with sedimentary rocks. They are understood to have occurred in ancient ocean basins, and they give proof of the earliest tectonic activity on Earth. Plate tectonics movement happens from the flow within the mantle of convection currents. The heat gets redistributed as the material rises. It is exactly like your favorite box of craft dinner boiling away on the stove. The hot material rises to the surface to cool down, then sinks again to get heated on another cycle until it is ready for a layer of powdery chemical-free cheese. One material that is able to harness any heat and turn it into electricity is called a thermoelectric material. The material naturally gives rise to an electric potential from the difference in heat on either side. With this material, existing waste heat gets converted to a cheap electricity. The Journal of Inorganic and General Chemistry released a paper about the thermoelectric properties of chalcopyrite found in Zacatecas, Mexico. In this study, the researchers found that pure synthetic chalcopyrite is a poor thermoelectric material. However, the natural enhancement of the thermoelectric properties of chalcopyrite found in Mexico can be tweaked and are due to variations in the composition that appear naturally in its structure, while not efficient for industrial uses. This study is the first one in many to come to figure out a new chalcopyrite structure as an efficient thermoelectric material. The goal here would be to have a thermoelectric material that is very efficient at room temperature. That would be a game changer for the industry. While chalcopyrite might not be the most economically substantive mineral, its presence still excites geologists, as it often points to a more economical mineral nearby. The situation is exactly like when you see margarine at a grocery store and are excited because you are now in the dairy section and butter might be close to you. For more on everything about minerals, visit my channel, Mindex. Thank you for sticking to the end and please, do not forget to calibre the like and subscribe buttons. Peace out.